He's definitely brutal. He's always savage. And you're definitely getting wrecked. Quick con, what is now the biggest event on the Quake calendar. Obviously, Quake being a much depleted scene from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when it was the game that was the foundation of esports, very much built up the Western esports scene. QuakeCon just happened. It was won by Kilsen, who plays for Big Clan now, famously the German Quake star. Obviously, we knew him back in Quake Live, where he was even a champion, famously at one tournament and that, but mainly hung around, say, like fifth to sixth in the scene. And I can't believe I'm actually going to say what the title of this video is because I absolutely thought this was a horse that had bolted and it was way too late to close the door. But Quake is back on the menu, boys. I watched this tournament. I mainly only watched it out of curiosity. I started watching the VODs at the end of the tournament when I saw that people like Rafa and Cooler, Kilson, players that I already know, Razy, had actually made it deep in the tournament. I thought, for curiosity's sake, I'll see how the final went or whatever. What I actually hadn't been aware of, and this is a game changer, is there's an entire Quake Pro League circuit now set up. They've changed the format of the tournament in terms of the actual game mode that they're playing. And it is completely night and day from how Quick Champions was before. Because when I saw Quick Champions even announced as a game, and they talked about how it would be this like class slash character based game where obviously Quake Famous even though it had different skins and models, it was the exact same game for everyone. I thought, right, well, what they're clearly trying to do here is appeal to the crowd who are the modern casual gamers who like the MOBAs and games that have all these different characters you can play for and all these different matchups and unique elements. And mistakenly, they're going to try and capture that market, fail, which they did. And then in doing so, they're going to give up too much from the hardcore market that want a very, very difficult game like Quake that involves a lot of mastery and a tough skill set and not too many weird RNG elements. They're going to piss those guys off and they're going to end up being a game which not only fails to deliver for an audience, but quite frankly, is a game that has no audience. It can't be hardcore enough. It can't be casual enough. So my first experiences of Quake Champions, mainly Quake Con, the one they launched it a couple of years ago, I have to say it was a terrible experience. Like, first of all, if you looked... No one knew what the scene would be. A lot of people tried really hard for that quick con and then even said afterwards, ah, if they don't announce enough tournaments, I'll probably skip out or just kind of idle or I'll play it a little bit and try and get back in shape for the tournaments. So there was massive uncertainty with the circuit, despite the fact that they launched with like a million dollar tournament. You had all these elements where because of the way the round-based system worked, instead of just being a time limit duel, people played way more defensively around the kills. You couldn't charge in as much because you didn't have the opportunity to come back. It was a lot more about having control and securing the easy kills or setting them up on the right champion that you're the best at top trump style versus what he's picked otherwise because champion component ended up being a big problem in Quake Champions. This MOBA-esque quality because it radically changed each of the duel matchups. Now, in the past, yeah, you had different skins, like I said, but that had nothing to do with the in game physics. Now all of a sudden, not only for the players is matchup knowledge key, but now if you're a fan, the burden of knowledge to know what these matchups are like and what they can do and what's a good move is way harder and way higher than if you were two identical characters and now everything different between the two people is player expressed skill or tendencies or just differences, quite frankly. And you can see someone's style as opposed to, oh, he's only on Anarchy because that's a really broken champion and he's one of the best Anarchy players. Like, or the whole scenario where I have to say, the fact that when Claws won the first QuakeCon, he did it with that bullshit style where he had that, like, uh, he knew how to abuse the way that the lightning gun was used at the time with aiming. That actually looked garbage. Because when I initially saw it, I thought, holy shit, is this guy the best LG player to ever play Quake? Oh, no, actually... This is just some bullshit. And when this gets ironed out, he's going to be a good but not as good player. So all in all, quite an underwhelming experience, even though, yeah, it was cool to see like so much money for Quake. Yeah, it was cool to see some of the old names like Vu, etc. come back. Start play. It was cool to see someone like Machiavelli come completely out of the, 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 the shadow of history, seemingly, and become involved in Quake again and be an analyst and be someone who's on the broadcast talent side. Obviously, he's a guy who his skill set as a personality when he was a player made him almost ideally suited to be someone who can speak and someone who has knowledge of the game. I actually think now, if anything, he's probably a little bit less spicy. He seems a little bit more of a chill guy. He's more, than, he's more than the nice uncle at this point in time as opposed to the bad boy, you know, fucking, <laughs> what would you call it? it? Enfant terrible, as they would say in cliche hack soccer sports circles of journalists. 
So I thought that was pretty bad. As I alluded to before, the scoring system was fucking terrible, where you would play, like, you pick three champions per round, and then, like, the first guy to kill all the other guys' champions wins the game, and a frag kills a champ. Like, this is a fucking terrible system. Like, the way that that was applied ruined the viewership experience for me. It encouraged and incentivized players to play way more campy, a lot more plus-back counter-strike style players, we used to call it in Quake World. It didn't incentivize great play and highlight play, and people going head to head and battling it out it actually ended up being a game that had the same problems that mixed martial arts has with its own round based system where you want to win on the judges scorecard and you don't want to risk all these unnecessary moments where things go bad you want to play safe and you want to grind out a victory and a victory is a victory it doesn't matter if you knock them out or if you, ch if you win by a decision so it had big problems in that sense <clears throat> especially because with such limited opportunities to play it was hard to do big comebacks in the way that people like Cooler were legendary for doing so you had a lot more direct counters in terms of the champions winning on a specific champion in context was harder to understand what it meant as opposed to he's just leading in the game like well no no that was actually the weak champion of the other guy of the three he picked his strongest is going to be actually the third one like you had to know all this extra stuff that actually I thought downplayed the action on your screen and made it seem less exciting I'll even add in when I found out years ago that they were going to hire Zero Four as like the community lead or liaison or leader or whatever the first thing I thought was this sounds fucking terrible because the person who directly was not involved in the community he was a player but he was never the sort of person who did loads of interviews he was never massively involved with forums etc he's someone who quite frankly has been a very quiet individual to me always was stuck stuck out as more of like the good boy do your schoolwork keep your head down type of a guy not really someone i see as like having a big personality who could be a commissioner type guy who could actually make big rule changes and had the ear of the players so he could get input from them but still had his own voice to make his own decisions so when i saw the scene it was quite underwhelming they didn't connect to the community they barely were able to get the hardcore involved beyond some of the pro players who wanted the money and the casual base wasn't there and the, the the whole scene, as far as you can tell, is still just a few, few tiny websites with a few people telling Sinclair he's a piece of shit or whatever every seventh post, which might not always be entirely incorrect. He certainly made some bad decisions and has his own spicy personality in some regards, but some of it a bit unreasonable, I think, to directly be sent to the guy. So, quite frankly, how was Ch Quick Chap is ever going to make it? I kept track of the odd tournament as it went on to see people's form, to watch the odd match, and it wasn't getting that much better, I've got to say. Like, I watched some of the best tournaments. Yeah, guess what? People who had a really sick eight reel and just plus backed a lot and were OP as fuck at a couple of champions like Anarchy tended to win the tournaments, tended to dominate over the other ones, and I didn't have that feel that I had from Quick, where you see a person's unique style immediately without the nameplate, and you see their movement ability, and you get the stylistic match, shop and then you have the specific tactics for this specific opponent because you played in that many times what changes when you have the champions and when you don't have as many opportunities to battle them etc all in all there was a lot of problems then the scene was way smaller there was like the odd tournament there was some dream hacks with some smaller ones the scene generally didn't embrace it in terms of the bigger esports scene. It stayed as a very marginalized game despite that money being spent initially. That uh, id software themselves slash Bethsaida didn't seem like they really gave that much of a fuck about giving it a serious push beyond the quick comp push and then hoping somehow just trip over and lock its way into being a big esport. Very implausible scenario unless you've got insane player base at this point in time or some sort of ridiculous grassroots build up around the game that makes it so interesting so what's changed well first of all they've got a proper tour which is the quake pro league now i will say one flaw already is that it seems to be an invite only tournament initially and you look at the names on the list and you don't see some of the big names that for the european division you'd absolutely want on there so the most obvious one is claws from belarus there's no Cypher from Belarus. There's no Agent from Russia. Now, there is Cooler from Russia. So here's the thing I'll say about this. First of all, in terms of Cypher, I'm not going to drop dime on people. There's a very good reason, circumstantial, entirely to do with him and his life, as far as I can tell, as to why he's not involved with this due to his, I'll just say, difficulties or ineligibility to enter the USA, where a number of these tournaments, including QuakeCon, are going to be. That's probably a big problem right there. Very sad, because he's one of the greatest players in any esport, as far as I'm concerned, and a fabulously talented player who I think right now with the dual time 10 minute time limit dual like the old school equipment I think he would be very very successful I think he would find that whereas some of the other players I have suspicion will fall away when the round base system is less impactful I think someone like Cypher would have gained and gotten stronger and stronger but like I say some specific reasons as to why he isn't hired 
As to why it clause isn't, I'm really not sure. Again, could his could be a different one where it's just straight up that it's hard to get visas. Sometimes if you're from Belarus, from Russia, Ukraine, it's kind of potluck as to whether you get that visa or not. Now, that's weird because he's been to many of these tournaments. He's been to many, many of the quick champions tournaments. Does he just not, not want to play? Be interested to know. Agent, I know, directly even flamed Sinker and said he did want to play, but for some reason wasn't invited. Again, a shame, because if you know anything about Quake Live... In those like 125 FPS cops, face it cops, etc. This guy was always money online. The amount of times I've seen this motherfucker beat Cypher and Cooler and get these crazy upset wins, but then you'd rarely ever see him at the land. So if you did, it wasn't that good. So he was always someone. I was always waiting for the day where, just like Evil years before, his insane online game finally translated to offline and we got to see what this guy could actually do because he clearly has the talent and the skills. Just his mindset was off somehow or he came along in the days when it wasn't as pro and he just didn't want to go ham. I'd love to see a guy, especially if he implies he wants to play, play in the tournament. Now, there is a challenges system where players play below a lower level and then there's a couple of, a couple of them at the top spots Get to go and challenge relegation wise some of the worst of the pros in their region there's 10 pros in each region na slash s slash sa and then eu for the other region i'll also add there are way more eu players that are good at quake champions than there are na in south america so the fact that they get 10 whole spots i get that they want to make it seem fair and not look at the different aspects of the scene but i think you're actually doing a disservice to some very good european players there and quite frankly i don't know how many of them will really keep up and go through the challenger system and try and win those spots and i don't think it's that fair to say to them well if you want to get in the league you've got to do it when they go and look at some of the players in the na division who are an absolute fucking joke yes is the best NA players, yeah, that's great. Some of those players there aren't a patch on the EU ones, and quite frankly, shouldn't be in this league. Like, it just shows how little talent and how few people are playing the game at a pro level over there. So, they have the Quake Pro League now. QuakeCon was the first event. There'll be like three big ESL events. There'll be four face it stages between. And as far as I can tell, QuakeCon 2020 is the final or the end of the circuit. So, in total, five big tournaments at least for Quake Champions. And it's within this league. It's going to be the same players, same players playing against each other. I like that component. That seems pretty good. Even the aspect that you played out a proper league first and then decided who played in the playoffs. I prefer a tournament system myself. I'd rather like top eight just made a playoff bracket and then you play out a normal playoff bracket. But this wasn't bad. Like it had some merits to it. It was a different format. It kind of gauged excellence in a way. Problem is, league matches aren't going to have the same appeal and the same drive and intensity as a big playoff match. Like, someone like Dahang, if we'd have had a league system years ago, could have won plenty of quick tournaments that he didn't win. But I tell you what, you put him into a system where you have a tournament format, and there's a reason that guy lost a bazillion finals. The reason he's lost many, many semifinals. And it wasn't always that he was the worst player. He couldn't beat the person he was playing against. It's because they had a better mentality in that setup. They had more experience in that setup. They knew how to play against him in those kinds of a setup. And he just wouldn't get those key aspects to fall his way in the high pressure intensity of a big stage match in a semi or in final that he would have done if it was a group stage game or a meaningless game elsewhere in a league where you've got 10 more games to make up for it. Now, the best part, what I, as far as I can tell, has really changed the experience and made Quake Champions vaguely viable. It's not as good as Quake Live, it's nowhere near that, but it's better than a lot of the other esports games out there, is the change and introduction of a new game mode. The new game mode, by the way, spoiler, is pretty much just standard 10-minute Quake Duel. Now, this is great because it means it doesn't matter how many kills you go down at the beginning of the game, or if there's a fluke kill, or if you kill someone and then they spawn right next to you. None of that matters. It's back to being a normal duel again in that respect. And even though, yeah, you've still got the champion component, which makes it tougher to follow, even then, when you've been watching a whole 10 minutes of someone playing on a champion... You start to learn the matchup yourself within that particular round. It's not the case where it's before. It's like, oh, he's dead immediately. I'm not really sure what he's supposed to do there. No, it's a lot more palatable for the beginner, way less of an information burden. Now, in terms of the actual tournament, that also got me excited because I was watching thinking, right, I've seen some of the tournaments kill someone before. Listen, the guy has an insane rail, but if there's anyone I want going up against him, back in time limit mode, it's fucking cooler, right? Cooler not only is the master of like a really good defensive game in Quick Chat, Champions, which he always had in all versions of Quake, or he's a little bit more aggressive in Quake 3 and Quake Live. But then you've got to add in his skills have, have always been very good, even in Quake Champions. He had a couple of champions he was very good on early in the game. Nix is an obvious example. And then you add in, historically, even though Kilson's had some nice wins over him, Kula has always matched up well against Kilson because Kilson was always seen as a super real heavy player, nice aim, but in a predictable fashion, the way he would use the aim, and they would play a defensive game and he wouldn't risk too much. So 
So someone like Cooler is going to download that pattern. He's going to find his little edges. He's going to make you uncomfortable where he can. He's going to self-play a pressure game so that when he gets one kill up, he just keeps you on the back foot. If you like to play defensively, you're going to be incentivized not to attack him often. And he's going to grind out a game. And that's why Cooler has won so many combat games and overtime games against Kilson. And he's won so many games where it's just by a couple of frags. Yes, Kilson could sometimes win because he had bonkers aim. But generally, Cooler had him in his back pocket over Quake Live and then parts of Quake Champions, but obviously in Quake Champions it was less of a deal. Kilson's won more tournaments than Cooler, for example. So what I'll say is this. I think that this makes for an amazing rivalry if the two play again, because this was a different Kilson. I've actually, over all versions of Quake, I've never seen a Kilson like this, because the key thing is, he had all the things I've described before, but first of all, his aim was hitting even harder than normal, and coupled with that, he was able to play aggressively at times. He was able to do the aggressive ghost walk players. He was able, by the end of the game, he was absolutely fucking styling on Cool in that third map. It was outrageous stuff. You even saw, I, I forget what the gun is, that shoots out like little, like, it looks like almost like an, an anti-aircraft gun from World War II, where it shoots it out and it's like a delayed reaction as to whether it hits you. He was unreal at landing that. Like, his aim was just dialed in. Cooler tried to do his usual, like, ambush plays, tried to make shit happen. It didn't work at all for him. The brief moment he got back in the game, it only lasted a few frags where he had to go absolutely ham, and then Kilson was right back in and generally just controlled the whole match the whole way through. It was outrageous stuff. So the idea that this player going forwards could have anywhere close to that form i'm a little bit skeptical but it'd be very exciting if he did this looked amazing like this looked like toxic and quake fall levels of how we dominated a very very good player himself because what made it so astounding the way this final played out is whereas in the past as i described stylistically cooler would match up well against kilson he knew how to play against kilson how to game plan for kilson where he was at in a match and when his opportunities to attack would be this looked like a classic moment I'll reference from the fighting game community, not a game I often reference. And this is actually this infamous moment where they interviewed the South Korean Street Fighter player, Infiltration, when he just won the EVO tournament. I think this was, what, maybe two, three years ago? I think maybe two years ago. And he fam they asked him how he was able to defeat his opponent. And he famously said, download complete. Because his point was like he just download. It's as though he downloaded that guy's entire playing style. He just understood it intricately, and therefore he could destroy him. That's what it felt like in this match. It wasn't just Kilson's aim. It wasn't just how great he was at being able to follow up with kills, being able to get away from. Kill it's like his read on Cooler was unbelievable, and even Cooler's adaptations somehow were factored into his read for him. Cooler himself tried to play more aggressively, but had some issues doing so. Probably wasn't the right opponent to try it against in light of the fact that Kilson came with... It almost reminded me of Evil, where Evil would just have such insane aim that when Cooler tried his ambush plays, I'd say like two-thirds of the time they didn't work against Evil, because Evil's aim would just be absolutely obnoxious when he would come in and try and ambush him, and he'd still get away by the sliver of health once he'd killed you. So this is a different K Kilson. It's a different Quake, as far as I can tell. Still got some of the same issues with the Quake... Of the champion versus champion matchups, still not a big fan of some of that aspect. The champions generally seem a lot more tuned and a bit more tweaked, so they're not as ridiculously OP in certain regards. Matt Poole, I think, still probably needs a little bit of work. Some of them I just don't think belong in pro play. I have my questions about the circuit, even though I'm glad there is a circuit. I hope there's a better system in the future for inviting people, make sure all the best players are involved, evening up the slots. I'd give a few more slots to EU until NA proves itself. I think generally there are a lot of things to criticise, but it's at least watchable again. You can at least enjoy some of the essence of what made Quake good, and that is back on the menu. This video was kindly supported by Alexander Rao, Nate D-O-double-G, Andreas Snazor Westerland, Dean Tanglis, Wendell Full, Blunt Smoking Anus Destroyer, Daniel Olivar, Ho Chi Mao, J Dobbs, Collier G, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, and a special thanks always goes out to Jerky's Minion and Wish. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Perhaps you'd like to ask me a question for my monthly video AMA. Do you want teasers or who the guests are for my upcoming videos? Maybe you want to take part in a monthly donate a discussion with me. Well, all of these perks and more are available at the Patreon link in the description box below.